everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to do some solar dyeing. We are going to investigate how much of a difference the addition of vinegar makes on how far the colors spread through the fiber. We're going to set up two different samples with acid dye powder, one where we'll add vinegar, one where we won't. We're going to leave them for a week and see how different they appear. Today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly is sponsored by Becky Simmons and her Ravelry shop. Becky designs these gorgeous crocheted blankets that have a very quilt-like feel with these connected squares in gorgeous color combinations and patterns. When designing, Becky asks herself, is there any reason why you couldn't? Which is a question that I can identify with really, really well. In her designs, Becky has adapted continuous join-as-you-go techniques to connect squares in these various patterns and colors. You can learn more about her designs in her Ravelry shop, and there will be a link down in the video description. Now, through the end of March 2021, you can get one of Becky's designs for free uh, in her Ravelry shop using the coupon code CHEMNITS at checkout. Uh, you can find more details and a link to the Becky Simmons Ravelry shop down in the video description. Becky, thank you so much for sponsoring today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. And now, let's go start dyeing this roving. Today, we will dye two different hanks of Knit Picks Stroll Roving. This fiber is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon combed top. Um, and it is super, super soft. And we're gonna dye both of these in similar colorways, similar setup, but there's gonna be one main difference. One will have vinegar and one won't. The plan is to layer the roving into these two liter mason jars, 100 grams in each. And we're gonna layer the dry roving with some acid dye powder. And then the water that we pour on top will either have vinegar in it already, or it won't. Now the two colors we're gonna to use today are Dharma Fire Engine Red and Dharma Brilliant Yellow. These are both primaries, and I'm hoping that we will create some type of sunset colorway where we'll have yellows at the top, and as it goes down and maybe some covers some of the red that we have towards the middle and the bottom, then maybe it'll mix into some oranges. Originally, I considered doing three colors, doing a red, a yellow, and an orange, but I realized I want to see how these colors spread and blend, and if we help the blend by having, or by having an orange color in there already, that could shift what we're seeing color-wise. But Rebecca, how are you going to set the color on the one where you don't have any acid? That is a really, really great question. Some colors with my tap water, which runs slightly acidic, do strike pretty quickly without the addition of acid. But my plan, even with a long time in the sun for both of these, is once uh, we come back inside and are ready to reveal them, I'm gonna add vinegar to both and we might do a double boiler type um, set and actually add some heat to it. If not for the fact that one of the jars didn't have vinegar to begin with, I would be comfortable just rinsing the fiber because a week in the sun is enough to set it, but I want to treat the two very similarly and have that lack of acid at the beginning be the main difference. But we might, and this is a might, be able to get a feel for the difference as uh, we open up the jars. But, you know, we'll see. We're starting off with the dry roving and I've sort of measured a little bit of a length, but we're just going to start adding the fiber into the jar. Maybe add like one more little blip. Um, I could add some powder directly to the bottom, but I know that when you have the powder in towards the middle, as you pour the water, that color will spread more towards the bottom. So the plan is to have red here, add a bit more, and I'm just sort of measuring out my bit more that I want. Um, 
yeah, add the red here, add a bit more, add a little more red, and then add, I'm not sure about the rest, but then we'll do maybe two little layers of yellow. That's the plan. Now that I'm ready to start adding in some powder, I am wearing a respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. So I'm going to take just like a tip of the spoon, sort of add that in, and approximately a similar amount for the other side. And now I'm going to layer in a bit more fiber. Press it down a little bit. And then we're going to add a little bit more of this red dye. Okay. And now we are going to add a bunch more. There we go, to come in with some yellow. And there could be some mixing of the powder in this process, but again, I'm getting just some on the tip of the spoon and approximately. There will be variation between the two, no matter how I layered things. Um, but the goal and the plan is to have them be as similar as possible. Okay, now that we're at the top, I'm going to take some and add it here to the top. And then again on the other side. I think that a lot of times if I do this, I might add some water for the first one and then acid in a later one. But I just sort of want to show off that you don't see a ton of color at the moment. I see a little bit of yellow and the red down there. But a lot is in the middle. Some might be on the side. And that is fine. Let's start with adding 500 milliliters of water. And you can see right away the colors are spreading in here. I don't want to shift it too much, but you could see the yellow and then some oranges down there. And now in the second one, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of white vinegar to this first pour. And trying to get, especially get that powder on the top wet. Now that all that powder at the top is wet, um, I'm removing my respirator. I'm gonna add another tablespoon of vinegar for the jar on suppose actually <laughs> this is my left that's the one with the vinegar and the bubbling that we're getting that you can see a little bit is because there's air pockets in there and so we're doing that over here as well and the goal is for everything to be completely covered with water eventually. I'm now not going to add any more vinegar to this one. I think two tablespoons is probably enough but I am going to add another 500 mils of water to both. And I see one thing right away which I'm not sure how big of a deal it is but look at the absolute color at the top. Both of these had had a lot of dye on the top, but the dye in this container here seems to have traveled more through the fiber than over here. Maybe it seems like as soon as it's dissolving, some is striking on that side. This was not something that I had expected. I expected that the gravity would make a difference, but not 
quite like this. And so now I'm adding slightly unequal amounts to each because I want them to have similar levels of water in the jars. But man, this is striking to me already. I'm going to label this jar, put lids on, take them outside, and so then we can go and do some more angles. But man, I, I did not expect that they would look so different so early on in the process. We have our with vinegar and without vinegar. And if I turn this around, ooh, look at those streaks of color. That is beautiful because there's some pockets of the red and you can see we're pouring the water and pushed that color down. And so we have all this pink and orange down there. That is amazing. And then on this one, we see some streaks as well. Um, okay, and we have some white down there. But the color seems to be a lot more focused on the top than the bottom when we had the vinegar in the jar. And wow, I think that that means that some color was starting to strike in the presence of vinegar right away. And when we didn't have the vinegar, we still saw that color, but more of it was being pushed down. And wow, I, I did not expect that. I was a little bit nervous with how colors would spread through the stroll roving because I know that stroll can really start sucking up colors right away with that superwash merino. But Wow, I think I expected, my hypothesis was that both would look like this at the current stage. And then maybe with time, if the colors weren't striking with diffusion, maybe the colors would spread out more. But it is very, very possible, very, very, very possible that these colors will look just like this when I come back to them in about a week. Um, because now we're going to let them sit for a week and let the heat and the elements do its job. Where I have them placed is not necessarily the spot in my yard that gets the most direct sunlight, but they're gonna be here for a week. So that's a lot of heat and sun and time. And goodness, we will come back and see what we can observe looking at the outside of these jars in about a week. Let's not forget that there is still color in both of them that definitely has not dissolved yet, powder that hasn't dissolved. So there still could be more changes that happen over time. Uh, there are some yellow pockets at the top of our container that had no acid. So we will see. About an hour into this, and there's a little bit of shade at the moment, there are a few interesting things that I wanted to point out. There we go. Now the lighting is a little more even. Um, you can see that with our no vinegar, there is more yellow than I think there was before. Over here on the side, I think more is dissolving. But the thing that really excited me was what we can see going on with the red. And that actually looks a little bit like a Pokemon or something right now. But see these tendrils moving up? That means that some color is dissolving, but there is some some amount of uh, equilibrium or something diffusion happening um, and it's not just in the downward direction and we can see that with the vinegar as well over here on that little tendril you can see that the color is sort of moving up and not just down and so that is really really exciting to me so again i'm not sure how much difference between them We'll see if it'll be like this when we come back in a week or if there will be um, another big change that we see. But if I observe something else in the next couple of hours, I'll make sure to come and point it out. Day one, a couple of hours later, and there is no question, pigment is rising in our jar with no vinegar. I mean, we knew it was rising before, but it is moving much, much, much further. And the amount of yellow is looking pretty similar on both, whereas the yellow definitely went down. What's cool is the red, you see those little fingers and you don't see that as much um, on the other side. But anyway, this is our last check-in, I think, until we hit next week. One week later, and the jars have been through a bit. They're a bit dirty. I believe it rained while we were gone. They feel pretty warm. They're currently in the shade, but uh, 
They were definitely in the sun. Okay, so here is our with vinegar and without. You can see we still have some more pale colors towards the top. The red, though, has absolutely spread more. Well, we have some white towards the back in this one. But I would say the biggest difference is these fingers of red that are coming up definitely appear to be higher than I think what I saw when I left. But, uh, well, you guys will know because you will have just seen that last clip. <laughs> Unclear how much of a change it was. I just peeked back. But really, the difference between, you know, what, three, four hours versus seven to eight days is not that extreme, um, which is useful to know. But now I'm gonna bring these inside. One other huge observation is that I labeled these with some marks on these labels. Now, I know which one is which because they're sufficiently different, but uh, just pay attention to how you make labels if you're gonna leave things out in the sun for a long stretch of time. Okay, Becky, I am gonna open up the one that had vinegar in it where we see less of the spread. And actually, we're gonna open the other one too. What we see initially is consistent with those original observations. I think having acid in the roving meant that as we added the, the more liquid, some of the dye dissolved and started striking really quickly, even while cool, and more of the color was pushed further down uh, without having the acid present. These actually both have a little bit of some warmth to it. I am now going to just pop the lid back on the one with no vinegar because we'll decide how to proceed with this in a little bit. But let's go ahead and open and remove the fiber from this jar. And that is where my dye pot is coming into play. So actually, the liquid pouring off is clear. And so before adding all the roving to the pot, I may as, just re may as well just remove this liquid. But I don't think you guys can see the fiber. I'll show you in a moment. The fiber has compressed a lot in here. Now, actually, I think we can go to the sink and I'll fill this up and then we'll add the fiber to it. Okay, here is our fiber with vinegar. And carefully, ooh, I see some light patches and we've got some more red patches, which there was less spread of the reds than I had anticipated. Ooh. Oh, oh, ew. There may be, I can't tell if that's fiber on my hands or if I will say, maybe is it just there or is it elsewhere? It feels yeah, it feels like we might have some bleeding with that red. Um, yes, I see uh, some bleeding now. Um, whether or not that will affect the rest of the fiber, I don't know yet. But I think that some of the red pigment just did not get a chance to really dissolve. And so that's why when feeling it, I was like, ooh, Ooh, texturally, I noticed. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this and I'll check back in after a couple rinses to let you know how it is going. But clearly, most of the color has struck. The problem with this roving is that it is so slick um, that when you pick it up, it almost feels just like a puddle of silk. But it's really not bad anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and put it through my spin dryer and hang it to dry, I think. And then I'll check for crocking. But the I'm afraid of like messing up the fiber too much, but the areas that uh, had color that came on my hands seem to have diminished. Um, and, but washing, like you lose, there's some pieces that just end up coming off. I think because um, the way that the fibers must be treated, they, don't really stick together as well, which is why I guess I feel it sticking on my hands and stuff too. But eh, maybe I'll do one more rinse and then we'll spin dryer. Out of the spin dryer, the colors are gorgeous, gorgeous. They're fluffy, um, a little stringy. You can see where it sort of has fallen apart a little bit, but I think can still be, you know, I'll be able to be ordered a little nicer when dry. But 
now at least I can come in and check some of these areas and see that yeah some of these I think red areas do need more soaking whoops I mean to add water to the whole thing I think I was just trying to check on yeah I think all of maybe not that one a lot of these reds need a bit more time to soak and so that is what I'm going to try to do Hmm. Maybe I'll just try holding. And use the sprayer. There's no question that I think we got some pinks spreading out because of all of this. Um, and if this weren't super wash, I would be really, oh, sorry. If this weren't super mop wash, I would be really, really hesitant to treat it this way. Um, and that's a fair amount of soap. But I'm trying to see about getting this color to dissolve. And maybe I can just shift. Because there's just... That's a lot of bleeding. Okay, there's just some pigment up in these areas and that is no longer light bleeding yeah that isn't light bleeding anymore that is substantial some substantial color coming out um which is a bummer because there was no way we had a heat wave and that was a week's worth of time but if the color didn't dissolve then, yes, yeah, so I think, goodness, what do I want to do? All right, Becky, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do or how we'll end up. I just know I'm going to pour some vinegar over that end specifically. We're going to set this aside and take a peek at our other roving because maybe if I need to heat set them, we can do that together even if it changes these final colors a little bit. With just a tiny bit of clear water in the pot from our jar with no acid, I'm gonna pour out the liquid and see what we see. And wow, you see that? I don't see any bleeding yet. I'm gonna go ahead and And the yarn come out. So right now there's very little pink and I feel like that's probably the way things were with our with vinegar at least initially as well. And yet this I think that the red we used must have gelled and that is part of the problem. Um, so we'll get more pink in here um, but it's wild to me that there was no bleeding when I first poured that water out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some warm water in the pot in here. And we've got that bleeding going on. That's just a big splash of vinegar. Um, so this isn't a ton of heat or anything yet, but this is also the first acid that this particular yarn has seen. And there's no question that we've got bleeding going on in here. And we'll compare this to the other one in the end. But if we did learn anything, we do know that the colors were able to spread out significantly, significantly more when we didn't have acid in there at the beginning. And I would say even now with the bleeding, initially we had yellow and red. This is now way more orange, and our other one still has yellow from even the rinses. So even that um, can tell us something. But I think, goodness, all right, I'm gonna add more water, and I'm actually gonna heat set this one on the stove top. So it's beautiful, but from the bleeding, we're now in a very 
red and orange territory versus a red and yellow territory, which is one of the big reasons why I didn't use orange to begin with. I wanted to see what happened. And so for all, there's bleeding on both and spread at both in the washing stage. What has happened here, even with the addition of vinegar, is way, way more spread and extreme than what we saw on the skein where we had acid present. And so that gives us some amount of conclusive results. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go heat this up and heat it for about 30 minutes. I just moved the other pot onto the stove, so the amount of time that this has been sitting is fairly negligible. But I think that the acid may have actually solved our problem. I'm not seeing any bleeding currently. maybe a little bit of soaking, rinsing, and acid. Maybe there's a hint of something. But I am going to fill this up with warmish tap water. And I'm gonna let it soak while the other pot heats up. Because if I see, start seeing some bleeding in here again, then I will heat this one, heat set this one as well after the fact. But for now, okay, okay. Okay, it has been about an hour. I've not applied any additional heat. There's just that acid that was in here and uh, my fingers are still dyed a bit pink. I don't see any coming off. We're gonna do one quick rinse, but I'm feeling optimistic. No bleeding, into the spin dryer we go. Meanwhile, the fiber that we heated, which is significantly more orange, Ooh, it's also beautiful. The pot is clear, and I am not anticipating seeing any bleeding. But the oh, good, we still have some yellow left. Oh, this is pretty too. Well, now Becky, I don't know which one my favorite is, but we'll look at them both when dry. But. There's no bleeding. I'll rinse this a couple more times and then also stick it in the spin dryer. And we'll come back and take a closer look at all the fiber. Wow, I have to say, I did not anticipate coming into this and liking the yarn with no vinegar better. Uh, initially looking at the containers, I was like, okay, I am going to really like the balance of color where we had our vinegar a lot better. And I love those colors. But by catching the spread and sort of reheating things, and this is spectacular. It is a sunset. It is glorious. And yet, there's still lots of variation of the color. I think what saved it was a bit of the spread into the more white section. And I think that the two combined actually look amazing together. One other negative from the yarn that had um, the vinegar in it is that, well, the roving is a little bit more messed up. Now, by messed up, it is still perfectly spinnable. It's super wash. But you can see that it doesn't look quite as neat and tidy as the roving over here does. You can see that it's a little bit more split, a little bit more stringy just because I had to be a little rough with it for the washing. I'm curious if I had actually treated these two skeins, skeins? I'm, I'm curious if I had treated these two hanks identically and put them both in water after the fact to reset it. How different or similar it might feel. I really should try dyeing stroll roving more often. It is so soft, so soft and fluffy. It is a tiny bit of a pain to work with just because since it doesn't have the barbs, the fibers don't stick to each other in the way wool does. And so therefore it kind of comes off on your hands and sticks to your hands more than itself. So that's a little bit of a pain, but it is so fluffy and gorgeous that I am thrilled. Becky, I hope that you really, really like it. And how beautiful is this? I know our final comparisons aren't perfect, 
because the way the fiber was treated at the end, it was ultimately different. But it was interesting that as the colors spread with no acid in there, things pretty much stopped after a few hours. It didn't co continue to equilibrate uh, in over the days and we didn't end up with one solid color in the jar, which in theory could have happened. So that was something that was really, really interesting to see. But we did learn a cautionary tale that if there's a color that you know uh, from making dye stocks might start to gel or solidify with just a tiny bit of water. Maybe it's not the best for solar dyeing, starting with the dry powder because, well, it kind of gelled on the roving a little bit. We were able to take care of it, but that's just worth keeping in mind. Becky Simmons, thank you so much for sponsoring today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. Don't forget that you can get one of Becky's designs for free from her Ravelry shop now through March 2021 using the code Chemnitz at checkout. There will be a link to Becky Simmons designs and her Ravelry shop down in the video description. Becky, thank you so much for sponsoring this video and I really hope that you love the roving. We absolutely have more to explore with this technique. This is just a first step, but I am both surprised by how little the colors spread and impressed with the results. And I definitely want to explore this further, um, again, with both superwash and non-superwash roving. It's really fun to set things up on a longer time scale and then see what happens. Honestly, I think I expected the colors to blend a bit more than they did. And so I'm impressed that we still have that amount of separation of color that we did see. If you love my experimental process, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and smash that bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I always post new content every Tuesday and Friday mornings, and we have lots of fun extras along the way that you don't want to miss. I am hoping to do more spinning content as we move into fall and as I'm helping my eldest navigate his remote schooling. I'm hoping that filming some spinning is something that I can easily keep up with while also supervising him on Zoom. So fingers crossed for more spinning content and some more roving dyeing content along the way. If you would like to support the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, I do have a Patreon. Uh, I also have an Etsy shop where I sell the hand-dyed yarn and roving that is featured in these videos. And I even occasionally have some hand-spun yarn in there as well. Uh, you can find links to everything down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.